How's it going? How are you doing? Good. Hey, we got a call about a male hitting a female and the two of them getting in this vehicle and taking off. So I, it, it was, I, 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 I just, I don't want to try and defend myself by saying anything here, but I pushed her away. She, she gets really worked up, and when she does, she swings and she had her cell phone in her hand. So I was just trying to push her away. But um, but Gabriel, John, my fiance, right? What's that? For a few page medical, we'll let us know if we need to head that way. It's nothing more personal than here. Tell me what's going on. It's 10 14 at this point, they're going to get there before I can get there. As far as being in traffic, it's going to be quicker to get there. Where's she at? Is that your car? He dealt with her. I don't know where he put her. Uh, he's, got, he's got some marks on this chin and his right eye. Is she in my car? Yes. This here. isn't my car. Oh, she is in here. Can we get the pocket? Yeah. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Uh, my name's Eric. I'm with Moab Police. What's your name? Gabby. Gabby, how old are you? I'm 22. What happened? What's going on? I was having a stress, a very stressed morning. Yeah? Is this your husband or boyfriend? <laughs> My fiance. Fiance? Is he a pretty good guy? Yeah. What happened over at Moonflower? Yeah. Um, well, I was just really stressed this morning trying to get a lot of work done, and I was apologizing to him. On the, the, I had thrown a bunch of stuff in the back, and all our bags were back there. I was just apologizing. I was like, I'm sorry that. I get so stressed out because I have OCD and I'm just like organizing something. Sometimes I just have a mean attitude, but I'm not trying to be mean about just straightening things up and stuff. So I was just apologizing, but I guess I said it in like a mean tone and he got really frustrated with me and he locked me out of the car and told me to go take a breather, but I didn't want to take a breather because I wanted to get going. We're, at, we're out of water. So it kind of made you more upset. <laughs> yeah, It didn't help calm you. It made you more upset. Yeah. And, so then what happened? And, um, so I, I, our goal was to come here and come refill our water. Are you guys um, living out, out of the van right now on travels? Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, so it was just, it was just really. So what happened after he locked you out? I told you to take a uh, breather. Well, he walked away to go take his own breather, and but I wanted to sit in the car because there was all my stuff was in the car. I had to yeah. run my bag. And I had, so I was working on something at the moment in the car and he told me to just relax for a second and I, I didn't want to relax so I got, got really mad and I mean I don't need to be mad. Yeah, what happens? Then what happened? I think and, then, and then I told him to drive and get water because I'm really thirsty. Yeah? Is there something on your cheek here? Looks like, did, did you get, did you get hit in the face? Um, Kind of looks like something like hitting you in the face. And then over on your arm, your shoulder, right here. There's, that's new, huh? It's kind of a new mark. Oh yeah, I don't know. Can I see the other side of your face? So, what happened here and here? Um, I, I'm not sure. It was a. Yes, I was just trying to get in the back of the car and the backpack was on the back. And got me. So the backpack got gotcha. you. So there's two people that came to us and told us that they saw him hit you. There's two people saying that they saw him punch you. We're just independent witnesses by Moonflower. Well, to be honest, I definitely hit him first. Um, Where'd you hit him? I slapped him in the face. You, you slapped him first? And then what, just on his face? He gets kind of just shut up. How many times did you slap him? Just a couple. And then what, and his reaction was to do what? Okay, I he just grabbed you? Yeah. Did he did he hit you though? I mean I mean it's okay if you're saying you hit him and then I, I understand if he hit you, but we want to know the truth if he actually hit you. Oh, I guess, you know, I guess, yeah, but I hit him first. Where did he hit you? Don't don't worry, just well, be he, honest. Like, grabs my face, it's like I guess. Uh -huh. um, he didn't like hit me in the face, like he didn't like punch me in the face or anything. Did he slap but, your face or what? Well like he like grabbed me. 
like with his nail, and I guess that's why it looks. I definitely have a cut right here, it's like a peel of yeah. the country ferns. But, uh, well, okay. So has he been drinking? No, we don't drink. Okay. What was up with his driving? I this also said he hit a curb. I I I hit him. While you're driving? Well he was driving. While he was driving you were hitting him? Well not a lot, but yeah. And that was distracting him while he's driving? Are you not, not only for like a second, but only because I saw him I saw the light come on and I like kinda of like so Did you already tell him all this? I didn't get that far into okay, it. She so was she was hyperventilating. She's a saying bit. that they don't, they don't drink, but at the point when you lit them up, you don't drink or anything. I, she I was just, him. yeah, I was yelling at him, and then when and you turned your lights on, I like kind of punched it arm like there's no, there's no so idiot. She's saying was why he hit the curve. You said it was, it was a Gabby. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm really bad. His name was Gabby. Yeah. Okay. You okay, Gabby? Do you, yeah. Do you have um, medication for anxiety you take or anything? <laughs> You t do you take any medication for any? I just do yoga. And you try to meditate and stuff, but you tend to have a lot of anxiety and stress. <laughs> I have a lot of anxiety. And what's OCD. his name? Is it Brian? Is he usually pretty patient with you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I get it. Just makes me upset. I know that he definitely gets frustrated with me a lot because I have a lot of anxiety, and he definitely has anxiety too. Well, oh, that could be a bad combo if you both have anxiety. <laughs> You know, I have anxiety too, and you know, my girlfriend, uh, my girlfriend's really, really calm, and she has a way of taking my anxiety and bringing it down, but my ex-wife, that's why she's my ex-wife, I'm just sharing, I know it's a little personal, but to help you understand, we would feed off each other's anxiety and it would spiral, you know what I mean? And it doesn't matter how much I loved her, it may be a bad for your soul, just saying. And I'm not telling you what to do with your life, but if you know you have anxiety, look at the, look at the situations you can get in. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we're not here to be it's mean to you or anything. Before. Well, you, you know, they never. There's a first time, and then it usually. Yeah. Let's just we'll go see what Brian's saying. But I, I think you've heard everything now. From you quick didn't question, hear. you said you were hitting him in the arm. Did you yeah. Okay. You want to come stand in the shade? <laughs> it's freaking hot. Another problem, man. <laughs> yeah, I know how. The, I know the. I know the. Why, uh, I know the struggle. <laughs> so you guys, you don't drink or anything? No. Okay. So you were talking to these officers, and I don't mean to butt in, I just felt kind of bad for you. Maybe even if you stand here, you'll have more shit. <laughs> I don't want to be right? weird out ducking down, but... No, I, I know how I, it I, is. I have a big sombrero. <laughs> well, from yeah, when I first got here, we were more worried about what kind of a guy you are from what we heard. But in talking to your girlfriend, it sounds to me like maybe this is not so clear cut. So, did you already give a statement to this officer? Uh, I got to this to gentleman say, here. Yeah. And this gentleman noticed that you had some marks on your, on your neck. Yeah. Yeah, and she's got some marks on her too. So we're just trying to figure out what all happened. And I know you probably already told your story, but this officer is probably going to be the one handling the whole case. Do you want to, do you want to listen to what he has to say? And, yeah, absolutely. And then you tell him and tell him what happened, will you? If you don't mind. Start at the beginning for me. See if it sounds the same. Yeah, I'm going to turn my car, get this noise out here. Oh, it's a, no, I'll leave your office on. It's going to be hot now. So travel around. And the flies here, like, pretty intense. Gatorade? You want water? I got some water. Yeah, you have water. Prefer water? I, I'm sorry, I only drink water. I don't blame you. <laughs> that she can only drink water. Are you worried about her story? Like, I... No, no, you can, you can talk to her. She, she seems like a really sweet girl, 22 or something, has a lot of anxiety, and from what she's claiming, she's the full-on aggressor here. Uh, how do we do so? I, I'd love to go talk to the independent witnesses, and maybe that's what I'll go do. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, there's a couple of waters. Here's this bag, because you might need that for someone else. Oh. I 
another conductor brings to rings the phone. And I, I was holding on to the keys because I just I didn't want to go anywhere. And my big fear is I, mean, I, I don't have my phone, I don't really I don't have a phone. So she goes off without me. It's alright. I'm on my own. <laughs> so uh, I was saying, let's just go for a walk or two trying to get the keys free, so I was just going to just wait back up back up and then that's when she hit me and I I didn't I didn't get, I don't want to push you, but I didn't get bit. I didn't get more really physical. I'm just trying to keep her away and, and not get bit. And then I got really loud, and like, that's probably a little bit of tension where I was going. Back up, get away, just get me. Okay, so you, you said you pushed her to create some distance, obviously, right? What happened after that? What got, what got distracted? Okay, good luck. Uh, police, how are you? Hey, we got this van stopped, and we're, we've separated the male and the female, and we got both of their stories. Um, now that we're not looking for them so intensely, I was just wondering if you had a minute to just kind of repeat to me what it is exactly you saw. No problem, sir. Yeah, so I was talking to my friend across the street uh, near the Forest Service building, and I just noticed that this couple uh, was sort of arguing a bit. And, you know, I wasn't staring at them, but it did catch my attention. And what I noticed is it seemed like they were sort of squabbling over a phone. I want to say that he was trying to grab her phone, and I'm not sure exactly why. And then it seemed like uh, he had sort of walked the one side of the van and sort of wasn't letting her in. And, and then the male was stepping into the driver's seat. And she was trying to get into the van. I think he said something about, why are you being so mean? something like that, and um, I, I remember he sort of hit him um, a few times, and it wasn't like slugs in the face, but just kind of like, like kind of like two kids kind of fighting. They, they reminded me of very secure, I don't know, <laughs> children sort of fighting, um, but there seemed like something was off, and it like a weird vibe, and um, yeah, eventually, it seemed like, you know, she crawled into the driver's seat, sort of like got into the vehicle over his lap. Um, sort of first her way in, I guess, uh, and then they were in the car, and then they just drove away, so um, I wasn't sure what the nature of the argument was, or what, it just seems like there was some sort of disagreement, and some sort of like shutting, I don't know why she would have entered through the uh, driver's door, I thought that was strange, and um, and yeah, so I thought about calling it in, but I, as soon as I walked up this bar, I, I, there was another gentleman who was already calling it in, so I was like, oh, good on you, that's giving it off, I wasn't sure it was in that situation. But um, that's what I saw, and if there's any other specific questions, I'm happy to try to answer Did that. you ever see the male strike the female? I, um, I would say that I think I saw maybe a push or a shove, but not like a full-on punch to the face or anything. Was like the shove like an, off. was the shove or push an aggression towards her, or was it a defensive maneuver away from her or to get her away from him? That's a, that's a good question. I, it was unclear what was going on to me, uh, but it did seem like he was, um, I, it was, it seemed like he was trying to close off the passenger side of the vehicle and close things up. It almost seemed like he put that backpack or something on the back of the vehicle, I'm not sure. And then he was stepping in and she was out trying to get in. So maybe, okay. Uh, I, I don't, it was, the whole thing was off, and, and so, no, I didn't see anything that was like him taking after her or hitting her or, or vice versa. There was a very, there was, it, it was kind of light, and they were almost kind of laughing, and I wasn't sure if they were just joking around, to be honest, but then it got more strange as he was in the vehicle about to drive off. And, but and you, you like, did see her like, slapping him, though, it sounds like. Yes, but, but it, yeah, it was like, I... My memory is he was in the driver's seat and she had 
has the driver's door open and she's like kind of hitting him either in the arm or maybe on the face, maybe with an open hand, like, hey, let me in, let me in, don't be a jerk, something like that. Okay. Well, you know, your story is really, really helpful because you're an independent witness and we've just interviewed both of them. And what you're saying is making everything make a lot of sense. So I really appreciate that I ran into you and that I was able to get your number and talk to you. So thank you very much. Um, if, uh, if, if we need to ask for a written statement, obviously it's voluntary, it's helpful, but I, at this point I don't know if we need to go that far unless you're around and super willing at this moment and I can meet you and get a statement. Yeah, no, I live, live here totally willing to do that. Oh, nice, um, okay. Just, oh, yeah, I can go write it down now before memory fades. Like I said, I was kind of just casually observing, but something did seem off, and where, I just wanted to make sure that no one was in a bad situation. So. Where can we find you to give you a form real quick? In about 10, 15 okay. minutes. Okay, cool. All right, Thank man. you. Appreciate you. All right, bye-bye. Hey, Robin. So I just got a phone with one of the two witnesses okay. and I recorded it. Do you want me to tell you what he said real quick? Do you mind hanging with him for a minute? So, I think we'll get away from both of them. So, uh, he said that he never saw the male strike the female. He saw the male trying to lock her out of the vehicle. She even told us that he was trying to lock her out, told her to go take a walk. He said that she was trying to get in. She eventually couldn't get in and actually clawed her way in through the driver's door. He says, I don't understand why she's doing that. Well, I think it's because it was the only door that wasn't locked that she could get through. So she's trying to get in over him. He's trying to disengage from her. I guess he hung her backpack on the back probably so she'd have her shit so that he didn't have to engage with her. Everything she's saying is the same thing. I haven't heard what he said, but if that's what he said, it's also what the witness is saying. The witness says, I never saw him hit her. I saw him shove her, but I couldn't tell if it was an aggression against her or a defense against her as far as her you know being the aggressor so at this point from what unless the guy's screaming that he needs to go to jail and did something to this girl it sounds to me like she is the primary aggressor yeah now the problem with her being the primary aggressor is in an incidence of domestic assault be it a male or be it a female we shall arrest now it doesn't necessarily mean they have to go to jail do a citation if it meets one of three criterion, which one of them is that we can ensure that they're not going to um, further risk each other's safety. But the problem with that is they live in the same vehicle. That's what I was going to say. The and other part of it is there has actually I'm, I'm been getting, injury too to the victim, which is him. Right, and I'm getting conflicting stories about why they hit the curb up here. What, mean, what did he say? Why he hit the curb? Well, I've watched. This is what I saw. First saw him cross the double yellow. I was doing 42 miles an hour. I was, I don't know, probably two car lengths behind him, tapping my whales at him, trying to get his attention. They knew I was behind him. And then after he crossed the double yellow, he merged over into the right lane, and then out of nowhere, just boom, went in the curve. So did he tell and you why? He said that she grabbed the wheel and turned it real hard. She said that she was hitting him in the arm. So. Sounds legit, I mean. I'm sure if I'm driving and my arm's on the wheel and I'm getting hit in the arm, I'm probably pulling out the wheel. Yeah. And I'm sure it was a little of both. I'm mean, usually the truth is somewhere in between. He's probably trying not to say that he hit her because he probably doesn't want her charged with assault, yeah. domestic assault. He probably would rather say she pulled the wheel than hit, hit him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, unfortunately for her, she we, we cannot, treat, just because he's bigger and stronger, and even if he's not willing to press charges, we can't treat this differently than if it was a male and female violence, yeah. and we're going to have to charge her, and um, we can do a citation if there's some arrangement that can be made to separate them, and then we have to let them know that there's no contact order in effect, yeah. and then we have to let him know the only way to drop it is to go into the police department during business hours and fill out a waiver, which, by the way, what's it's today, Thursday? Today. So it won't be till tomorrow. I know, they're until noon, I think. Yeah. Which well, I'm sure he's going to want to drop it. Well, the other part of it is they've said that they've been on four or five months that they've been living out of the van together. Well, this is really bad news, so let's talk to him first. Yeah. His name's Brian? Yeah. Did you, did you ask him yet and take pictures of him? Yeah, no, I did. Okay. So, Brian, unfortunately, in the state of Utah, we don't have discretion on some 
things. Like, for example, if I pull you over for speeding and I want to give you a warning, I can do that because it's under a class A. It's a class B or under. If I want to give you warnings for all kinds of stuff, I can. But there's a few things I can't. Like, when I say I, the police, I'm not in charge yeah, of this. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the state legislature doesn't give us discretion on is charges when it comes to a domestic assault. And it sounds like you guys are living together, so you, you meet the statute for domestic partners and you do have injury and both an independent witness probably the next one we're going to talk to as well which we haven't talked to yet but one the one we did talk to and your own companion have made it clear that she was the primary aggressor and that she was striking you and that you received injuries you haven't admitted to striking her she has not admitted to you striking her the witness did not see you strike her so at this point you're the victim of a domestic assault that even if you even if you didn't want to pursue this we don't have a choice. The best thing we could do to not, the law says we have to charge her. It doesn't say we have to put her in jail, okay? But it also says we have to separate, do a no contact order, and that we have to put her in jail if we cannot separate. And there's a little problem here is you guys are out of Florida living in the van together. How are we supposed to separate, separate you guys? Now, I don't want to take this small 20, what is she? Yeah, she's a 22 year old. 22 year old female in jail, to jail. That you could definitely defend yourself against, but at the same time, we can't say because you're a male and she's a female, we can't treat this different than if you were the male hitting her. Well, I mean, we gotta treat it the same. Yeah, no. So she's kind of in a tough spot. So unless you have an idea about how she can not go to jail and be separated, do you have friends in town? Somewhere she can stay? Tomorrow, if you want to, it's up to you. You can, can go, go to jail. You can't because we don't have a charge for you. Now tomorrow, if you wanted to be get with her again tomorrow. I'm gonna take your radio. <laughs> if you wanted to, if you want to be with her again tomorrow, because it's after five, so our office is closed, so you can go to the police department, fill out a waiver to drop the no contact order, so you guys can still be together. But she's going to have a court date online in, in a week or two. She's going to have to show for her court date online and answer. The prosecutor might drop it. They might say, "You're, if you, for example, if you're not willing to pursue it, if that's your decision." It, 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 anyway, I was going to say, it definitely is. I'm not going to pursue anything. She's my fiance. I love her. It's just a little squabble. I'm sorry that I had to get so public, um, but uh, Stuff happens. so I just want to get like the checklist of things I got to do to get rid of it. So if so you want her back, date. well, she'll get a paper with a court date. Okay? How do I get rid of it? <laughs> well, the court date has to be attended in order for them to decide whether they need to continue or drop it. The first is just an initial appearance to say, are you who we think you are? Yes. Here's the, do you understand the charge that's been brought against you? Yes or no? Yes or no? The answer. Uh, do you have a, an attorney? Yes or no? Do you need one? And then from there, she can she can ask to speak to the prosecutor. The prosecutor might be contacting you and say, "Hey, man, like, I know she's 110 pounds soaking wet, and you're a big, strong guy. And we understand you're not even wanting to pursue this, but the cops have to follow the statute. How, like, what? We're in the interest of you, of justice for you as a victim. What do you think?" And they can decide to still prosecute her, or they can decide to drop it, or they can decide to give her a plea and make it kind of go away if she behaves from now on. But that still ha does not eliminate the first court appearance. That she has to attend, which thankfully for you guys is going to be online, so you don't have. So if you're out of town, so here's the thing: if you're out of town and she doesn't come into our court appearance online, they can suspend her driver's license, they can issue a warrant for her. So she needs to play ball. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that so, make sense? Yeah. And remember, we're a team. Me and her are a team. I'm sorry about all this. I apologize again. But so she's got her online court date, just to acknowledge that she's hurt, and then she's got the one for the. Well, we, there's automatically right now there is something called a no contact order in place. Yeah, From this point yeah, forward until tomorrow, if you wish to drop it, you have to go into the 217 East Center Street Mob City Police Department, all the and you have to ask. Them, we'll give it to you. You want to fill out a waiver that you're requesting a wave, a waiving of the contact order, the no contact order. The no contact order means she cannot come into contact with you. She cannot talk to you. She cannot text you. She cannot go onto any premises that you're occupying. She cannot go to your vehicle. And until you drop that, or until court date, if you don't drop it, it stays in effect until midnight on the day of court. And then that gives you time to get a protection, protective order, a long-term one, if you feel like you need one. But it sounds like you don't even want this one. So tomorrow, they open at 8, you can go in the police department, you can fill out the waiver, they can remove it, then you can say, hey babe, where are you at, let me pick you up, and you can pick her up. Now, we're hoping not to put her in jail, but if she doesn't have somewhere to go tonight, to be separate from you, then where are we supposed yeah, to I can't do? talk to her now because it's separation. Because there's no right? contact order yeah. So tell me this. Do you guys have enough money for like a hotel room or anything like that? Because what we could do is we'd cite her for this and then I'd give her a ride over to whatever hotel you guys is. And you can pick her up there tomorrow if you and want you, to drop the no, the no On your way 
go pick her up, you stop over there at the PD, sign the paperwork that they're requesting, and then you can go pick her up quite literally within minutes. Unless you know someone else in town that's a friend that she can stay with. Yeah. Yeah, no, unfortunately I'm not. I, I don't, and I guess that... Man, I sure hate to... I don't want her to go to jail. Will it be... If she goes to jail, it's like, uh, it, that, that, that goes down somewhere instead of her going to a hotel, right? If you did um, a citation, it would be... It, it kind of depends. So if she goes to jail, they're going to book her, and they'll take her fingerprints, and yeah. it's going to go on her criminal history, and then if they if if they don't convict her, then it will just show that it was dismissed. On, it, was, it will show up on her criminal history, but the charge was dismissed. If she is found guilty, it will show up as if she was guilty of a domestic assault. But the charge, will, the charge itself will show up on her criminal history until she gets it expunged. Now, even if we give her a ticket, we're still going to take a fingerprint and it's still going to show up. Either way, it's still going to show up. She, there's no way around a Class A. Or is this Class B? This is Class B. But they do require a fingerprint on it. Yeah. Okay, so... The other part is, is if you contact her or she contacts you, she can be charged with a Class A. Well, which is a little bit yeah. different, but it doesn't help us. If you were to contact her and she responds to you, then she could get a new charge yeah. for violating the no contact order. The no contact order doesn't restrict you, it restricts her. So if you go talk to her and we find out uh, you're not in trouble, she'll be in trouble. So it's, yeah. it's in your interest to... Does that all make sense? No, I'm getting it all. It's okay. a lot. I really quick. No, no, I'm getting, I'm getting it all. I'm just trying to figure out a way. You don't know anyone in town? You guys been here how long? No, I don't know anyone in town. If she went... She could... I, wonder, I don't think CK will take her where she's the aggressor. No. It is a women's shelter. I'm curious. You could find out and say, hey, she doesn't wait, have nowhere to go. If you did the citation, she, like, say she drove off and she could drive off in this car. We could give you a ride somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's I got my backpack. Sucks for you, but I you got my could, backpack. You can spend I, a night. You want to drive me to Delicate Art? Does she have a good driver's yeah. license? And yeah, she's a, yeah, she has a driver's license. You, yeah. Do you yeah. trust her with your vehicle? And yeah, she can handle it. Well, then you'd kind of be homeless for the night around town. And I mean, I can't talk to her at all. Well, and I've got to do the, the thing so I can't go camping. We can tell her what it is that she needs to do to get in, to get through all this and then let her know what your plan is. Here, here's the problem, though. If we take you up to Delicate Arch, you're going to be hoofing it from Delicate Arch all the way down to Moab Center Street so that you can yeah. fill out that paperwork because if you're not there by noon tomorrow, you're They're gonna be looking at Monday tomorrow, morning. Because it's uh, early out Fridays over the office. Yeah. So you won't be there after You'd be looking at Monday morning before you could actually see her again. Yeah. And again, we're not trying to make your life hard, but this is written in statute. There's nothing know, we can do about it. It's designed to protect victims of domestic assault. Not everybody's the same. This is different yeah. than normal, but we have to treat everything the same. And that's just how it is. So you think they can't afford a hotel? No. Uh, very, very little money we have for sure. Hotels are um, expensive here now. You want me to? I'll call CK then. Just see if CK will take her for the night. I'll see if they'll if they'll take you. Yeah, CK, CK, CK can figure it out. This is a women's shelter. Me? Oh. Okay. Uh, actually, no, actually, C. Cave will take yeah. him as a victim of domestic assault. C. Cave will take you, and they will help you tomorrow. And you're like a block and a half away from the PD. Well, let's see if okay. C. Cave will take him because they took, they actually put up, actually, they didn't take a guy, but they got a hotel for a guy last time. Yeah, I'll do that. C. Cave might get you a hotel. Okay. Now, what she does... I might, I might be sleeping outside in a sleeping bag. No, no, so C. Like, I don't no, need a no, hotel. Don't I, I think C. Cave uh, will get you a hotel. If you want her to have the van, we don't care. It's up to you. But there's nothing we can do about the rest. I don't want to open my car. I'm just trying to think. i got to grab my... i got to make it like a little bag. You sweating to death yet? I think we're good. You good? <laughs> I'm going to talk to you real quick, but I've been talking so much, i got to get some water. I'll be right back. Let me grab the water. Now this is a water. It's well, cold water. That's how we get visitors. Hell <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, Gabby, when you grow up and you're a full grown man, this is what you'll drink from. <laughs> Plus it's ice cold and so I'm gonna drink from it. Sorry. Thank you. You'll probably never be a full grown man. And then you do curls. Then you can do your curls. So look. I'm going to speak to you frankly. I have a daughter almost your age, and I'm looking at you not so much like a suspect, but also as kind of a victim in the sense that you're dealing with some struggles emotionally and mentally at your age, 
probably they'll work themselves out as you get older. There's a lot of angst at your age, and I remember being your age too. And hopefully it works itself out. But the stuff you did today that, that contributed to this, because you both contributed to this, uh, is as a result of your inability to cope with the anxiety and the stress that you're having. So in a way, you're kind of a victim of this. Um, I think you would have done better if you had the skills to do better. But you don't learn skills until you learn skills. And you're not, you don't have enough life experience yet to know how to navigate everything. Like I don't either, but I can navigate what happened. If I was in your shoes, I could handle it different because I'm 39 years old. I've been through it. But I've got a lot of life lessons to learn still because I'm like my dad and my grandpa's, you know, they know stuff I don't know, right? They can do stuff I don't know. So in a way, I'm just letting you know that we sympathize with you. But based on what you've said and based on what our, vic our witnesses said, and even based on what your, your fiance has mentioned, trying his very hardest not to have you in any trouble, he does have marks on him that witnesses say were caused by you slapping him. And that even you say you slapped him and, and were aggressing him first. And I don't have anyone saying that he actually punched you aggressively. It sounds like it was shoving in a manner that was probably more consistent with trying to prevent you from entering the van or to get space from you, not to ass assail you, if that makes sense. So if the tables were turned and he was beating on you and you were shoving him, of course we're going to look at it like, oh, of course she's defending herself to get away from this guy. Well, we're, we're kind of looking at it the same way with him. And we have to treat both fair, even if he's a bigger male and you're a smaller female. The law doesn't say, hey, Officer Pratt and Officer Robbins, you can treat people different based on gender under the same... So we can't. Even if it makes no sense that you... Because you, you probably could not physically destroy this man the way that he could if he attacked you. We can't treat you different. Okay? So all that long-windedness I'm giving you right now is leading up to the fact that the, if I pull someone over for speeding, I have the right to give them a warning. I have something called officer discretion. But in... In the legislature in Utah, they have made a law that if we have a domestic assault, they don't trust the police to make good decisions because too many cops have made bad decisions. So they say, we're not going to give you discretion. We're going to write a law that says if you have a domestic assault, whether it's male on female or female on male, whoever the primary aggressor is has to be charged. No choice. You don't get to give them a warning. It doesn't even matter if they've barely heard it all and the guy doesn't want to press charges or the girl doesn't want to press charges. We don't have a choice. We literally have no choice. He does not want to press charges. He says, you guys are a team. He says, you're his fiance. He says, he loves you. He says, he, he doesn't want anything to happen. But we're explaining to him that we don't have any choice in this. So we're going to have, we're trying to get a local uh, victims advocacy group called Sea Haven to get him a hotel for the night so that you can have the van because they won't give you the hotel because you're the you're the one who is the primary aggressor so they're going to consider him the victim so they're going to get him a hotel though. so you, he wants you so that you don't have to go to jail because the only thing we can do is take one of take you to jail he says well so she doesn't have to go to jail then i will accept c caven's help if they'll give me a hotel and then she can have the van so she doesn't have to go to jail she can just have a ticket when you get the ticket it's going to give you a phone number to call and they're going to give you a court date and that court date will probably be online to come back to Utah? No, it'll be online. Oh. You have a smartphone? Yeah. So you can. I Sorry. go to court. You're okay. Sorry, I've yeah. never heard of this. I didn't know yeah. this was in when, Utah. When COVID happened, they switched all the court from in person to online. So when I go to court now. I have a I, ticket for hitting the curb or something, please, because we're okay. Like, we're just. I understand, but we don't have. We don't have. Any, like, listen, if I had any discretion of this, I would separate you guys for the day and just give you warnings to stop hitting each other. <laughs> But I lawfully don't have discretion here. I, I don't have any... Because somebody said something, like a witness said something? But then there's two witnesses. And then there's what you said and what he said. And guess what? It all matches nicely that, that you were the primary aggressor and that the injuries he has were caused by your aggression towards him. Even if he doesn't feel hurt, even if he doesn't want to press charges, there's nothing any cop can do about it. It's written into the law. I know that. I don't... Want Normally we take people to jail, but he's trying to work it so you can just have the van tomorrow. I don't, I don't want to be separated. <laughs> you 
going to have anxiety? Yeah, yeah, no, we're a team, please. <laughs> There's no, what is it? No, like, we're a team, please. I'm gonna, it's going to give me so much anxiety. Can we just have, like, a, a driving ticket? Okay, the, the very best thing I can do is call my supervisor and see if I'm missing something here. <laughs> because if we can, I'll, I'll pay you any driving ticket, a parking ticket, anything. Okay, Gabby, that Gabby, better, try to calm down and I'm going to go call a supervisor. But I don't think that there's much I can do, but let me see if the supervisor can tell me something I'm missing to make this I not happen. I can't feel and I can't. I couldn't handle that. I'm okay. sorry. Just give me a minute, okay? You don't have to sit out in the hot sun unless you want. I'm going to Okay. Thanks. Hey, Gabby. Hey, Gabby. Hey, Gabby. So, a tiny little girl, 22 years old, slapped her boyfriend, her fiance, several times. He's got a little bit of a, a little tiny abrasion on his, on his like, uh, on his chin, on his jaw. They got into a van and drove off. They got called in by two different, well, there's one caller and then a witness. Got them stopped. The story from the witnesses matches the story from the female, matches the story to the male. She was pissed off. She's having a rough day. He tries to separate from her. She's not staying away from him. She has severe anxiety problems. He locks her out of the van, says, you need to go for a walk and cool off. She's forcing her way into the van. She's clawing her way past him into the van to be with him. He's shoving her to get her out of the van, but he's not assaulting her or he's not assailing her. He's trying to keep her out. She's punching, slapping, everything. She's got to be 105 pounds soaking wet, 22, full of anxiety, having a really tough time. Not making excuses, but I mean, it is written in the code. We do have a domestic assault here. He's not wanting to pursue it. He's very adamant. He does not want to pursue it. We're mm -hmm. explaining we don't, have, we don't have any discretion on these things. We're giving him a no contact. We're letting see Cave and see if they can get him a hotel so she can have the van so that we don't have to put her in jail. Um, she's she's really struggling with the idea of being alone and not with him and not having the van. They want to be together. I told her, look, there's not anything I can do. This is all written into freaking statute. She's. I just said the last thing I can do is call a supervisor and see if there, where this is such a minor. It was like a slap fight, and there's the injury is from a fingernail. I just don't know if it's worth the whole domestic thing or not, or if it's going to get some trouble if we don't do it this way. Well, they don't want to, but I told them that unless I get some kind of permission some other way, I'm pretty sure this is just statute and that we have to separate you. As far as the domestic assault charge, what do you think about that? Well, I mean... Do the whole thing or not? But is there a way to not do anything on something like this? I mean, it's so minor. It's hard to say, right? I'm going to go reread the statute and just see if, if it fits or if there's a way it doesn't fit and if I can find a way that, because it, it really is, this the spirit of the law is being lost on this one. It really is. So let me see what I can find and if nothing else, then we'll have to separate them whether she likes it or not. Alright, thanks. Alright, bye. Thanks.
bodily injury means physical pain, illness, or any impairment of physical condition. So let's see. He's not ill. He doesn't have an impairment of physical condition. And if he's not in pain, like how? Okay. How far do you want to go with this? Like, you know why the domestic assault code is there? It's there to, to protect people, especially... The reason why they don't give us discretion on these things is because too many times women who are at risk want to go back to their abuser. They just wanted him to stop, and they don't want to have to be separated. They don't want him charged. They don't want him to go to jail. And then they end up getting worse and worse uh, treatment, and then they end up getting killed. Mm -hmm. In no way, shape, or form that I can perceive does what happened here, a little slap fight between fiancés who love each other want to be together. Can I perceive that this is going to digress into the situation where he's going to be a battered man? Right. But then again, I don't have a crystal ball. So I was looking at the... I mm -hmm. talked to the assistant chief to see if there's any way to just go less than what we... than the full force domestic assault route. Right. And he says, look, I mean... You either go all the way or you don't, and it's like, okay, but under what circumstances can I not? And really, the only time I cannot is if it doesn't fit. If it fits, then it's in the law, then you have to do it. So I went and I looked at the code for assault, because this is an assault and has to be domestic assault. Code, Utah Code, assault. Now, you and I both know what it is, but think of how valuable it is to look it up and read it word for word, especially when what you're doing is going to get evaluated by a court who cares a lot about words. Words are there for a reason. Assault is an attempt with unlawful force or violence to do bodily injury to another. So did she did she attempt to do bodily injury to him? She went to smack him. Did was her was it was it her intention to do him bodily injury? Now that's what we have to find out. Because it says bodily injury is that by definition physical pain illness or any impairment of physical condition. Well, he's got a swollen right eye. We don't care what the Scratches. result was, we care about the intent. So we gotta go find intent. intent. If she did not intend to cause him pain or illness or to cause him impairment of physical condition. Was it intent and attempt or intent or attempt? When you're attempting to do something, it's, you have to intend to do it. True. If I intend, if I attempt to, to, to get a basketball through a hoop, I have to intend to do it. Intent is implicit with attempt. Right. Okay, so what was her intent? <laughs> what was her intention? If you go ask her, what was your intention when you were slapping him? And she says, uh, I wanted him to hurt or be ill or impair his physical condition, then there's nothing we can do. One way to word it might be, hey, when you slapped him, were you intending to cause him physical pain? And let's get let's get rid of illness because it has nothing to do with it. Physical pain or impairment of his physical condition. Is that your intention? Is that what you were attempting to do? That's what the one says right here, an attempt. Right. Were you attempting to cause him pain or an impairment of physical condition? Whatever she answers to that question will seal her fate. Because the only way you know what, her her, or what she was attempting to do is by asking her. Right. Set it up right. Set it up just right. That's how people will ask someone in that way. Gabby, this is a very, very important question. How you answer this question is going to determine what happens next. But the only person who can answer this question is you. Okay. Think very hard before you answer the question. Do not quickly answer it. Think very hard. When you slapped him those times, were you attempting to cause him physical pain or physical impairment? Was that what you were attempting to do to him? No. What were Never. you what were you attempting to do? What was the reason behind the slapping and, and stuff? What was what was it you were attempting to accomplish by slapping? I was trying to get him to stop telling me. Okay. Well, it doesn't sound to me like she attempted to injure him. It's your call. This is 100% your call. I support you either way. 
Society and the judges and everyone can, can judge me for this. I am looking at a 110 pound female and her fiance who have no means to be separated. He doesn't want to pursue it. She's not a threat to him. More than slight abrasions from her fingernails. I, I don't care if, if we use the actual letter of the law to, to not charge. But I also don't care because it literally does possibly make perfect sense to go full on domestic assault and do the whole thing. This is uh, your opportunity to make the decision. Let's, let's, let's do this. I support you either way. Let's do this. Taking your advice. Let me do a uh, crime report on this. Won't charge right now. Won't cite her for it right now. We'll send it off to the county attorney. City. City attorney. Because it is the send it off to the city attorney. Let them screen it and make the decision. If you send it to the city attorney and they strongly disagree with your decision and they throw a complete fit, you might hear about it in a very negative way. Right. So I would make a decision yourself. I'd rather be dinged for a decision I made than a decision I didn't make. Especially if they think you're completely negligent in your decision. That's Why give it to them? The only way to reason to give it to them is if you're not sure if you have enough for something and you want them to decide if they have enough. So I, I support you. I, I'm not joking. If we need to go all the way to jail or whatever we need to do, all the way down to. Three years out. Oh, no, go ahead. this? I'm making this decision. I'm going to cite him. I'm going to go okay. all through the first Would you feel more comfortable here. handling that guy? Yeah. Go handle that guy. Then. Go handle that guy. I go handle that guy. Okay. If you're more comfortable. Well, I'm, it's six one way, half dozen the other. <laughs> it's up to you. I mean, it's a headache whether I go left or it's a headache whether I go Look, right. Another option is to not charge them but separate them for the night. If they find themselves together again, what is it to you? You separated them. You provided for his safety. If he doesn't have enough sense to stay away and you, you got him separated, it's on him. You can't babysit him all night unless we put in jail, so it's up to them and not the You can separate him and say, don't, don't let this cool off till tomorrow. If, if they don't let it cool off and we hear about it, we'll hear about it. They're camping in the park tonight, we'll let you know. And if there's some fighting going on, you already was Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah. You already gave him a chance. What you can't do, by law, is separate someone and say, if we hear from you again, we're going to arrest one of you. Because then if one of them really needs help, they may not call police and get help. The law says you cannot, literally, you may not say, if we get more problems with you guys tonight, one of you is going to jail. You can't threaten them like that. Right. It's true because it will stop someone from wanting to call the police to get help. Does that make sense? All right. So go full or nothing or in between and separate them and kind of give them the nod, the wink, like, hey, you know, just stay separated. It's up to you. I'm going to go handle that. You got very capable help with you here, and I trust you. Call me if you have any problems. SOTT, I'll separate. I'll be in route to that and talk to you now.
I just want to say thank you guys for helping us. Appreciate you. You too. Uh-huh.